been a quiet 24 hours of football news, hasn't it? What is going on? One thing we do know is that Thames will will remain in the Vanarama National and we will sign a 23-year contract to be here. Oh, my word. <laughs> Unless we've already signed it and I was unaware. folks and welcome back to afc Thames, the story that continues to be mystifying to not just me but the football manager community as a whole hopefully you caught up with the videos i did with zealand and we're back to continue then our seasonal adventure with afc Thames. this is now an unprecedented sixth season can i get a, can i get a woo or a drum roll i don't know anything anything uh right i said of course then that we would uh, we would go through things today we've played a few games already let's go through the transfers we've made then some of the outs some of the ins how have we revolutionized this team so first things first the players that have left us are five familiar names at this point uh that have, have served us okay but not well enough it's fair to say nathan burns has left us of course the man he accelerated out of this club like no tomorrow um huristo trenda felov has gone as well not, not, and that's the best i've ever said his name which is a shame adam dixon thomas ings and adam phillips thomas ings is the, probably the one that, that is the saddest for me has spent a very very long time here one of the top performers uh, i say top performers has played the most amount of games for thames um definitely up there in the in the, the stats i would imagine um so he leaves us as well no one's been sold so there's that and we have brought in lots of new players and we have, of course, focused on the loan additions. Let's go through in order that we achieved them then. Um, it should be said, for those that, again, I'll, I'll leave a link to the live stream. I said I'd do it yesterday and I forgot, so it's there today. If you want to see the entire transfer window, how the pain of that affected me my mood starts off brilliant at the beginning of that stream and then by the end of it i am in a lot of pain but i think we've done enough here to make us far better um and that you know wasn't there was quite a low bar to begin with uh, darren walsh was the first man we brought in of course we've got a relationship with Leighton orient so i thought i would try and get some loanies from them i've taken their quickest player who has more than one vision um and also can play as a striker as well and will do when cabbage is away on international duty which is something that happens far too often for me it's very very annoying uh, so i don't know have given us darren walsh they've also uh, given us anthony mcbride at center back who looks like a real good prospect and a player that is definitely going to be make, make this team far better five foot eleven as every good center back that wants to join appears to be but that nine passing pretty good and again some really well-rounded mentals and physicals i think we've got a decent player here heading is his only concern but do you know what i'll take the good defending if it means we, we lack a little bit aerially and is also captain for our side now which is a little bit odd um Blaha has come in as well from Reading, another loney signing for us. Uh, basically, again, we could, we could get him for nothing. So players that I could get for nothing that were of decent quality that were on the search list, I thought I'd bring in. He's not a standout, but he's, he's you know, he's fine. He's one of these sort of maybe deep line playmaker. Oh, sorry, not deep line playmaker, sorry. Uh, deep line forwards that could be quite good for us. Eight passing is not too bad for a striker. It really isn't. So, um, yeah, he, he could fill in for that role. Speaking of strikers that have got some creativity, we've gone for someone well-rounded. We've gone for someone to link up and play balls through to David Cabbage and uh, Daniel Siddiqui is going to be one of those players you can see the Jamaican 23 years of age um actually assigned for as well 350 quid a week has been uh, released by Whitehawk had a, a pretty good career um well, I say pretty good career he was at Southampton's right so he's got a bit of pedigree last year eight goals two assists I'm hoping the two assists basically flip round I'll take two goals and eight assists if it means Cabbage is scoring a boatload cost us six thousand pounds because there was a uh, sort of a signing on fee right sometimes you take a player as a compensation fee as well I mean um so yeah Daniel Siddiqui come in from Whitehawk and I think has got some some real quality about him so that's, that's exciting speaking of real quality this is a man I'm very excited about Harry Ridgewell comes in really nice physical six foot three a presence in midfield um has got good tackling good marking decent enough passing the mentals are pretty much all above eight the ones that are important for me um again could sit in the base of this midfield on low from lincoln costing us 500 pounds a week which is quite a lot for a low knee signing but at the same time i do think makes us far better um just makes me feel more comfortable than someone like ocon who didn't have like the 10 first touch as an example was never quite as good Ocon's still here, but it's I think having Harry Ridgewell sitting in the centre of this now, being the pivot for everything, 
you'll see tactically what it just makes sense uh goalkeeper wise so we sold some players at the back end of last season these two guys callum ferry and brandon uh, brendan cornwell were both sold nine grand brought in for the pair of them of course both of my goalkeepers and that then sorry if i get this in order brings us to royston Concannon, who is our new goalkeeper really good agility uh punching tendency is quite high but good decent enough reflexes decent enough handling I think he's going to be, like, just, just for some reason, I've got a feeling he's just going to be better than our other two goalkeepers. Of course, time will tell. Uh, he's been at Solihull Moors for a long side in the National League, not really playing for them. Uh, played a little bit for the reserves and things like this, so hasn't featured a great deal so far. Not got a clean sheet, but I do think over the course of the year, he's got a tough job because we're leaving him a little bit more exposed than our previous goalkeepers. But I think so far from what I've seen, it'll be all right. Back to attackers, though. And Peter Boateng, uh, we've got in on loan from Gillingham. This is a player I'm excited about. Great passing. Sorry, great passing. Great dribbling, finishing, first touch. Really, really good at those. Like, really good for this division. Great teamwork as well. Decent pace on him too. Uh, lacks the composure maybe. But again, he's going to play as almost the pivot because he's got great first touch because he's got good dribbling his ability to keep the ball looks like it's going to be a real pl a plus point for us i'm going to play them either side of cabbage these two guys up front are going to be the sources the supply line right we've got Siddiqui, you've got boateng they're the men i'm trusting with this uh, and at left back from berry town um we've got him on a free transfer welcome paul gore who just looks like a pretty well-rounded left back with nothing too exciting the work rate is a bit of a concern but we couldn't get any good left backs and i'm sick of sam heel so we had to make moves uh so team wise and squad wise it's a bit inflated there's still far too many players here some of them are going to drop down some of them i may look to sell on um but all in all in terms of the budgets in terms of what we're spending we're 441 pounds over which it's kind of fine actually there's a there's a part of me that thinks that sending this club into more debt is the way out maybe so we're gonna kind of not worry about the money at all at this point five hundred and sixty thousand in debt right now it's a problem and tactically moving away from the, the the money for a moment cabbage you can see we'll miss this game against worthing and, and you'll see why we're playing them in just a moment uh cabbage is gonna have to step away for this one which is not what you want because he's going to be one of our star players and walsh the pacey walsh uh, from late Orient is going to come in and replace him um i might even do you know what because boateng is slightly better in a forward area i might change things around just a touch have walsh although he's not great at passing again the pace might be important for assisting um we're playing this system right we've changed things around i'm going for something more attacking it's kind of gegen press-esque and it's just the intention of this tactic is to create as many chances as possible we did not do that last season it was a huge problem for us we weren't scoring enough goals which meant we were so open to conceding many so far we've scored six goals in three games and our xg in some of these games the other shot game not so much but the home games against Eastleigh and the first game of the season as well like 3.05 in that one in the first one against hereford it was a it was a strong uh, 2.62 so we know at this point we are creating we're playing worthing the reason we're playing worthing right now it's going to be our, our only game of today uh worthing 350 to one if you could find a team viewers that was worse than us we found them um promotion is going to be a dream it's going to be pretty impossible i suspect with the way that things are set right now but with us scoring goals with cabbage being in the side it's, it's frustrating because cabbage like looked really good in the first game and then if you look at the form of it he's been on international duty for the last two and couldn't feature and we drew both and i just think with him in the team we might have actually nabbed them both um and it's not again not available for this one but i'm hoping he will be a catalyst for good this year in terms of the ability of the team if you go by star ratings which we kind of have to at this point um we're okay we're not like again we're not fantastic We've got probably just enough in the starting 11 to be pretty strong. Like players of Mark Scott and Matty Burns. And of course, Cabbage are going to be there to come in and fill in if they need to. And some of the youth prospects as well. Like the potential graph makes it look like we've got so much to be excited about. Uh, Kerr Brown, the striker, 16-year-old, is one of the best. But as you can see, not that good. So what is going to be in store for us this year? So far, as I say, three games played. We're on five points. We've, we're unbeaten. Can we beat Worthing, who are just below us in the league table, but again, I predicted to be far worse. If we can't beat Worthing, based upon the prediction, which is, you know, hit and miss, then I'm worried. Let's get into the game then. First game we're going to see of the season. Is this the year that Thames begin to turn things around? I really hope so. Like, really hope so. Like, I'm, 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 I'm verging on desperate, viewers. I'm verging on desperate. All right, we're going to put uh, Matty Burns on the bench, actually, for... Oh, this is quite difficult. Diallo, I guess, is probably the guy who's, again, one of the younger players. Uh, trying to bring some of the youth through. 
if there's opportunities for us to play them, I will do, but I don't think it's going to happen all that often. We're at home, though, against Worthing. The big point of today, once again, will be chance creation. If I don't see it, there's going to be tears. In two games, we've done a lot of that. In one game, we didn't do quite so much. Game on. Okay, Thames versus Worthing. It'd be nice to, to start the season in video form with a win. I would love for it to happen as Ocon to Boateng. Oh, do you know what? It was a very direct piece of play from Ocon, who's back in the side. I realise I didn't run you through the team particularly well. That's poor from me. So this is how we're looking then. Concanon's going to be in goal. Um, Oyigoki. I'm just excited to get another season on the go. Uh, uh, Oyigoki on the right-hand side. We've got Gore on the left. Marshall and McBride at the centre. I, I think Marshall starting games for us is going to be pivotal. Ridgewell sits in the centre then as a ball winner um, Blahaha Blahaha no there's not an extra ha Blaha on the right hand side Ocon on the left we've got Walsh Siddiqui and uh, Boateng through the centre then and of course Cabbage to come back as and when it suits him when he's not playing for Poland under 19s okay so far we've created one chance and uh, I'm not going to say that's good enough for me but it's just nice to see us creating as we now see some movement. It's a lovely header away by Marshall. And now Ocon has got three passes he can pick out. And he goes for the quickest one. Walsh. Oh, it was really good. Nearly really good. Walsh goes again. The pace of him puts the ball across. That's kind of what you want to see. He's not necessarily got the passing or the creativity to find players. But you can already see look, how we're pushed forward in attacking areas. The three guys in the box. We've got full backs pushed up. Two central midfielders in support. We are trying as Darren Walsh bangs one in. We are trying to force teams back. And so far, 10 or 12 minutes in, we lead 1-0. What a goal that is from Walsh. As uh, if we see more of that, that sensational Ridgewell, I said, Ridgewell, going to be crucial. That ball over the top is fantastic. Walsh, first touch, and what a finish. What a strike that is. It's 1-0 Thames. Wow, we are, oh, it could happen, viewers. It could happen. This could be the year as the ball's launched forward. He's headed back down. Um, we've gone up in a few games recently and then sort of fallen away and, and again, not won those games. So hopefully... That doesn't happen today. happen today. We're on attacking. We are really going for it. As Gore cuts it out. And now the pace of Walsh again. If he can get away the ball. It runs It runs loose. Boateng's going to be on this. He's got the dribbling. He's got the passing. He's got the creativity. And Siddiqui. Well, this could be it. This could be it. Siddiqui. Daniel Siddiqui. 2-0 Thames. Worthy in the mud. We're back. We're going for them. We're going for teams. I will watch the replay. Yes, please. Give me it. Boateng. Really good from him. Lays it across to Siddiqui. And it's 2 0. Viewers, this is all. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, the, the XG is not amazing, but the, we've seen from the chance creation, we've been in twice. We've scored twice. All good highlights come from a, a Thames goal kick as it's launched forward. Blaha on it now, racing on on goal. Big chance for him. It's three. It's 3 0. I, oh, my goodness. We're, oh, viewers, I'm so. I know they're supposed to be the worst team in the league based on odds, but. Come on, 3-0 up. Absolutely cruising, Blaha. It's a it's a brilliant clearance by the goalkeeper. He's in on goal, and it's a fine finish. I mean, I, oh, I believe, viewers. This is the problem now. I believe. <sighs> Good heavens. Good heavens. The front three on form, midfield, doing the business. Ocon's still a bit rubbish, but at half time, it's going to be Thames 3, Worthing 0. And we're good for it. And I just thought I just got a little glance at the league table there. That's outrageous, viewers. Where is it? Show me it again. We're fifth. Come on. I tweeted out the other day. I tweeted out, I think I've solved it. And I watched the first three games and I saw what we were doing to teams and how we were just we were in games. That was the big difference. We're in again there as well. Oh, is it gonna Oh, it should have been. He's missed an open goal. Um, we're just in games more. We just look more threatening. And look, there are games where I'm gonna get battered and I'm gonna lose. And there are teams that are certainly superior to mine. But the fact that we're at home and we're scoring three goals, even if we go on to draw this 3-3, I can kind of settle for the fact that we look like we're in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, we look like we've always got a chance as the ball's lofted forward. Boateng might be in again. Walsh is on it. He's already got one. Now he's got two. It's Thames 4, Worthing 0. Darren Walsh. Tactically, I think I've got this right. Like, I, I just think it's taken me six years but I've brought in the right players. I've gone for a double deep line forward with the player through the middle. They're all attacking. They're all looking to score. But equally, if the if the pass is on, they'll they'll play it. We saw that earlier on with the cross across goal. I don't know how to feel. I've, I've not felt like this for the whole the whole series. Free kick goes in as oh, Con Cannon with a block. Oh, and a save as well. We love that. Oh my words. I feel alive. 
as it's another goal kick i'm loving the goal okay that's not that's not a good goal kick uh <laughs> they're back on the ball it's lofted forward togwell is on it i mean they've got a few options in the center we don't really block that header goes in con cannon with another save he just seems like a safe pair of hands does con cannon makes me excited for what's to come this year as the ball is launched forward boateng I thought it was in space there. I thought it was going to drop to him. As with 25 minutes to go, surely at 4 0. This is done, right? Gore steps in, plays it forward, flicked on. There's a man over. Oh, the, the, the link up play is not great there as it goes all the way back to their goalkeeper. I've, I don't think I've won a game 4 0 in, I don't know when the last time would have been. Ocon now driving forward. Boa saying, I've certainly not won 5 0. It's 5 0. Come on, everybody. Celebrate good times. Come on. <laughs> It's a celebration. This is amazing. I feel alive. I've never felt more alive. Boateng's in on goal. As it's, you don't know what, it's purple right now. It should be green. Because we're going, viewers. It's go time. Oh, my word. I think I fixed it. Have I fixed it? Is this a one-off? We'll find out next episode when I've lost four in a row, won't we? Oh, Christ. This is it now. The fight. I couldn't have, I couldn't have dreamt for it to be like this. I could this is this is a dream this is a dream while the rest of the football world completely falls within itself thames rise again this is football this is what it's all about to be you know in the premier league to have that dream and to fulfill it and they've missed a really good chance and while you can just look you can dispel the rest of the football for a moment you cannot believe in what's going on in the rest of football this is a project and, and, a, and a movement that we can get behind afc thames are on their way to well we're winning five nil let's not say glory let's just calm down how can i be calm how can i be calm look at us we're flying we're flying we're gonna win five. i'm not making any subs why would i we're five nil up we're crushing the game right now crushing it. this is without cabbage this is cabbageless there we go. Thames 5, Worthing 0. The XG, I mean, it wasn't great, but the chance creation and conversion. Who cares about possession? That's what we're talking about. A nice victory. Well done, boys. I can't go over the moon. If you've enjoyed the video, come on. If you're not going to drop a like for a 5 0, when are you going to drop one? That's sensational work. And uh, I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. for a whole lot more. This was an absolute joy. And. Uh, I can't believe it. Darren Walsh, I mean, he's coming for, for cabbage there. He's undroppable, right? Wow.